Affilism is based on negative utilitarianism. You can agree with negative utilitarianism and disagree with affilism, but if you don't agree with negative utilitarianism, you cannot agree with affilism. Affilism only applies to this ethical theory. Now, I think affilism is based specifically on a consequentialist theory in normative ethics called hedonistic negative utilitarianism. The hedonistic part means um, basically that only feelings matter, and the negative utilitarian part means that preventing negative feelings is a duty, while increasing positive ones is not. That is the only part of negative utilitarianism I agree with. But just as any utilitarian theory, negative utilitarianism is based on an aggregation of value. The value of the quality of the experience, the quality of suffering, is aggregated uh, with the value of the number of the individuals who experience it. Apparently, this seems like a consistent calculation, but its implication is that sentient beings get to be considered just like economic resource. They become easily expendable. Uh, the main goal of uh, negative utilitarianism is minimizing suffering, so a strict uh, take on negative utilitarianism entails that the end justifies the means, even the most horrible ones. It entails that sentient beings uh, can and have to be sacrificed, even by inflicting serious harm, if that act spares a bigger number of sentient beings from the same harm, so not even a more serious harm, the same harm is just enough to sacrifice them. I think that is unethical and morally blind. The fact that the experience of two sentient beings is equally valuable doesn't mean that they are interchangeable. Sentient beings are separate, unique, unrepeatable individuals with a right to be left alone and not treated uh, and exchanged as if they were numbers or resources. So, yeah, do you think two individuals experiencing X amount of suffering are equal to one, individuals, one individual experiencing two X amount of suffering? I think we should ask ourselves questions like this one. We should question the way overall suffering, the concept of overall suffering, is calculated. I don't think overall suffering can be considered that way. But the affilist take on negative utilitarianism is even worse. Uh, it is not just a strict approach to negative utilitarianism. In fact, uh, affilism doesn't seem to allow any real exception. It's just pure negative utilitarianism. The goal of affilism is not really uh, the minimization of suffering. It seems that for affilism, a single individual or a relatively small number of sentient beings are not worth the trouble of trying to rescue or spare, uh, or spare them from harm, unless, of course, they can, in turn, help spare many more from suffering. The goal, the real goal of affilism, uh, seems that it's just the elimination of suffering. So only what is considered to get close enough to that uh, is worth doing or not doing something. For affilism, even the suffering of the huge, uncountable number of sentient beings existing now on Earth is irrelevant. That's because compared with the number of sentient beings that will exist in the future, they are a very small number of beings. Uh, so, I will leave in the description uh, a link to a video that I made on the subject. One example that I reported in that video in an attempt to make uh, what I'm saying uh, more clear and shareable is that if you think suffering can be calculated that way, you will end up thinking that uh, even though very high, there is a number of individuals breaking their fingernail or experiencing a low and short time headache that are worth one person having cancer. So, <clears throat> yeah, as I said, if you uh, agree uh, fully or partially with negative utilitarianism, you can still disagree with affilism. Also because there are parts of affilism that, that a negative utilitarian uh, doesn't necessarily have to share. 